Welcome back to Fogger Figures, where today I'm going to be doing another WWF Hasbro figure unboxing video, and this one is looking specifically at Series 5. Baby, we are good! <laughs> Possibly the best. <laughs> As you can see, I have unboxed Series 5 figures before on this channel, and those guys are on the table in front of me here. So I've got the Mountie, and I've got Virgil. I did also unbox another Series 5 figure in that video, and that's this guy here, IRS. But as you can see, uh, just from looking at him, he came out of the packet pretty much sun damaged. Um, not really in the kind of condition that I want to have him in my collection. So I have an IRS, I have a loose IRS, but I don't, if that makes sense, I'm still in the market for a good condition um, loose IRS. So... You may see another IRS getting unboxed at some point on this channel as well. Um, so my Series 5 loose figure collection, because I like them mint, because I like them to be nice and fresh, uh, it only extends to two two characters at the moment, so that's the Mountie and Virgil. But I'm going to be adding to that today. So I've got a couple more Series 5 figures today. So the, the last video when I unboxed IRS, Virgil and Mountie, it was probably not a very exciting video for Hasbro collectors because there's three Hasbros that they're fairly accessible. Mountie's probably the hardest one out of three to get your hands on. Um, they don't go for big money, any of those those figures. So not really that exciting a video, but hopefully that's not the case today. I've got a couple more exciting WWF Hasbro figures to open up today. So first one I have is this man right here. So... I can already hear the comments being typed in this video that, uh, why are you taking these guys, this this one and the next one I've got, like, why are you taking these guys, these cards are awesome, they're really nice cards that they're on, and that's true, like, they are on good cards, but the reason that both of them are coming off their cards are because the bubbles are absolutely terrible. Um, Anvil's bubble is cracked here, 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 and a little bit down here as well. It's, uh, it's completely shot, the bubble. So... As far as a mint on card figure goes, there's there's really not any reason. I think I mean, you might disagree, but I don't think there's any reason to keep this guy on card uh, because the bubble is in in such a, a poor state. It's a shame because, as I say, the the card is pretty nice. But you know what happens in this channel? They come off the card, so let's let them breathe. Here is Jim the Anvil. This. This is a controversial figure, in my head anyway, it's a controversial figure because he shouldn't, Jim the Anvil Nightheart had a really good, he's had a couple of runs in WWF and this outfit that he's in, this is his new foundation outfit, he only, this is probably the, the, the least time he spent with a look or an image or a gimmick. I mean, he was only ever in the new foundation for a few months, he only ever dressed like this for a short period of time, and you compare that to the length of time he was actually in WWF, as the Heart Foundation with Bret Hart, or as just as a, in his singles run as Jim the Anvil Night Hart, it was always the pink and black. He always had the pink and black. So, you know, to have years and years and years in pink and black, and then maybe six months in this scale, and this is what his action figure comes out as. That's that's just like almost criminal. But this is still a cool figure. I still quite like it. I do, even though it's not the iconic image of Jim the Anvil Night Art, I do like it. I think I think the colours uh, of his his parachute pants, his MC Hammer parachute pants, are actually quite vibrant. They you know they do kind of they stand out. It's yeah, it's pretty cool, um, and I have seen some really good customs of Jim the Anvil Night Art. It's it's one that you can custom by either taking um, a Bret Hart body essentially and putting the Anvil's head on it, um, or just painting up his, his trousers to, to do the, the sort of pink and black look. Um, so I've seen a couple of good customs. Um, for me, like a custom's only a good custom if it's like close to being professionally done. When it looks amateurish, when it looks like someone's just done it for a, a primary six art project, um, I, I think they're sort of just a waste of a Hasbro figure. But I have seen some good, good Jim the Anvil customs to um, put him back in his Heart Foundation gear. But yeah, so this, this figure... It's pretty nice looking. It's got a little bit of scuff at the back, and that's coming off. That's okay. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty cool. That's really, 
I, I like um I like that move. I like the, the clothesline move. It looks like Jim's hand goes in a different sort of shape. And I did take another one out. I need to get like Greg the Hammer or something out to compare it. I mean, it does go straight out like that, but it just looks like when you bend it forward, he's kind of pointing down the way rather than pointing straight out. I'm sure it doesn't look like it's broken or anything. I think it's probably just the way the mould is, but I think the other pun, the other clotheslineers, sorry, the more sort of put their fist straight ahead when it, when you put it in front. I'll need to check. I've got Rick Steiner upstairs. I've got um, Greg the Hammer upstairs. Who else? I'm sure I've got another puncher as well somewhere. But I'll... Uh, I'll compare that and see how that lines up because that to me stands out as like a very obvious difference between that and the other. Um, but the other thing I like about this figure uh, is that the models, the the body molds were reused. I think you know they they were um, they were reused from figure to figure. So maybe a body mold that was made specifically on one WWF wrestler. It is fine. It suits that character. It suits that that image. But then, when you recycle it for a second wrestler, it just doesn't fit. Probably Jake the Snake's an example of that because Jake has that kind of. I mean, he's obviously big. He's he's a, a guy that works out. You could it's certainly at this time when he had his figure out. Um, but he was never shredding. He was never ripped. You know, and the body of the Jake the Snake figure, I think, is really accurate to how Jake the Snake looked. But then they reused that figure. They, they reused that um that physique for other wrestlers and. I just didn't feel like it, f it fitted those guys as well. I mean, Billy Gunn, I'm pretty sure he just has a Jake the Snake body, but Billy Gunn is, he is a big guy, I mean, he is pretty shredded, you know, so to have that kind of not really chiseled physique doesn't really fit him. But anyway, I'm, I digress. But point I'm making is Jim the Anvil Night Touch body, this, this is exactly how I remember him because he had like this very, very unique fat guy six pack. Like he had quite a, a rotund, uh, body like a barrel shaped body but he did have a visible six pack um, and he was always very very sort of thick and broad in the chest and shoulders I think he was actually a shot putter in real life I think before he was a wrestler maybe in college or something he was he, he did the shot putter um, but yeah I mean he, he was really big really broad really thick muscular and I do remember him having this sort of belly that stuck out but you could still see his abs through it um, so that is a really, really accurate body sculpt, I think, for Jim Nighthart at this time, anyway, at this period. Um, but yeah, I do actually like this figure. I really like him. I'm really glad I've got him. Um, so yeah, there's there's Jim the Anvil. Stick him over here. Um, so as I said, I do have two from Series 5. The other one I have is the real American, Hulk Hogan. If you look at this again, you'll probably look at the card and think, that's a decent card. Why are you taking that out of the card? But the bubble is, I don't know if you can see that, but the bubble is almost completely separated. Yeah, the bubble is almost not attached to the card anymore. So, in my opinion, there's no point in keeping it on the card like that. I mean, other people may disagree. Other people may like to just stick it in a protector and put it up on display. But in my mind, no, unless they're perfect, unless they're minty, Unless they're in really good shape as mental cards, then pff, let them breathe, man. Take them off the card. So here comes Hulk. He is actually in really nice shape. Arm is really, really stiff. His waist is really stiff as well. Um, he looks really, really fresh. Yeah, anyway, so um, he's a puncher. Just like Virgil, he's a puncher. Um, so this this Hulk figure I think gets a, a bad rap. This is the fourth the fourth issue of Hulk Hogan. I suppose it's the fifth if you include the mail away. Um, so there was the series one with the Gorilla Press Slam, then the series two had Hulkster Hug. Series three was I don't know what Hulkaplex I think it's called. Um, which is like the kind of uh, suplex move I think he does, and and then this guy came out. And he does the punch. He's, he's, it says Hulk's or Slam, but he's a puncher. Um, now, this is kind of like the black sheep of the Hulk Hogan Hasbro family. And it's everyone's least favourite Hogan figure, or it seems to be anyway. That's kind of what I hear. But I quite like it. Like I, I think that it, it's a good... You know, Obviously, the other three Hogans all had the entrance gear, essentially. They had the, the vest that he rips off. And... That sometimes that can bother you. I mean, 
not so much with Hogan because it was just a t-shirt, but you know, having like the LOD and their entrance gear, I've said before, I like Million Dollar Man and his tuxedo, but a lot of people don't like that he's in his entrance gear, um, which I can understand. So, you know, when you're eight years old, seven years old, and uh, you're playing in your fig fed, you don't want guys in their entrance gear, I suppose. You want guys that are in their match gear and their, their wrestling gear. And this, this is a, a Hulk that, this is how he would look. Maybe not with a bandana on, but you know, this is this is how he would be if he was in the ring having a match. Um, so I, I think it's a great figure. And I think, I don't know, I just, I, just, I think it's like a, a good look for Hulk as well. You know, given that big punch. I, I thought the Hulk's a hug, even though it was like a unique figure, and it's the only one that has that move. It was just a kind of clumsy, awkward figure. The Gorilla Press Slam, the series one's probably the best one, let's be honest. Uh, and fitting with his gimmick and fitting with his character, you know, and, and how you would kind of book him in your fig fade, he would be throwing people over the top rope and stuff. But, but I don't see much wrong with this. I, I do quite like this figure. Um, well, he's got a little... Oh, after I've done that, he's got more. But he's got a little bit of paint rub on the back there. I'll come off. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I do quite like it. Sorry, mate. Just smash your head first on the table. Um, I think, what I think interesting about this is that he's wearing the bandana. So he starts off, if I remember correctly, I'd have to go back and double check the details, but I think the first Hogan has got a headband on, I think. And then the second one, I'm not sure if he has anything on Maybe he does have a headband as well. Um but the, the hairline is visibly receding in the Hulkster Hug one. And then uh, the third one's got a bandana on. And, and by this point, so this came out, would this have been 1993? I'll check the date on that. I think it was 93, 92, sorry. But this point, um, Hulk Hogan is bald, man. And he's getting no hair on top whatsoever. And I, I just think it's funny that, you know, as, the, as he lost more and more hair, like his action figure went from like headband to bandana. The, he's a he's just covering up the fight he, obviously to me it seems obvious that he's had some kind of input to say I don't want a bald action figure get a bandana on that guy um, which it might not be the case maybe it's just you know the way that Hasbro designed it but that to me that seems like what's happened here is that uh, he's he's said I want a bandana on that figure I don't want to be kids playing with a bald Hulk Hogan a bald Terry Belia um, which is fair enough I suppose I mean if you had creative control over what your action figure looked like you probably would shave a few pounds off add some extra hair whatever but um yeah fair dues but yeah so that is uh the extent now of my my series five collection as i say i do have irs but i'm not including him in it um he's he needs replaced so i'm gonna have to find another irs somewhere else um but yeah this one this one's an interesting series because Probably the hardest, the hardest get from this series, I think, would be Macho Man. Would be the um, the Macho Man, Cowboy Macho. I think that is the only one that's kind of like really, really difficult to get hands on, or or really expensive. I suppose would be the the better way to to put it. Um, but other than that, I think I mean Warlords in this series. Rick Martel is in this series. Um, I think Skinner, I think, is another one that's in this series. Uh, so, you know, these are guys you can get hands on. They're not too expensive to get a hold of, and they're, they're you see them fairly regularly. Um, so, it shouldn't be the most difficult series to complete. You know, it's not going to be like series one or series two where there's some guys out there that you know you, you just cannot justify spending that kind of money to take them off of cards. Um, but this is probably one that, that is obtainable, it is a series that you could. Um, buy them all mint on card and unbox them um, because they are not they are not the most uh, outrageously priced and you know if you can get them the way I did I mean I didn't pay much for either of these two guys at all um, compared to what I would pay if, the, if those bubbles hadn't been in the condition they were uh, so I'd, you know you can get them out there if you get them in that in that condition then it doesn't cost you much at all so anyway uh, that is it for this video. Um, I'll leave you with the, the image of my Series 5 guys. Hopefully be adding it to that soon. So keep an eye out for that. Subscribe to the channel. Hit your notifications. Leave a comment. Like the video. Stay safe. We'll speak soon.